Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the lecture 8.1 of Power System Protection and Switchgear. In this lecture, we are going to study about directional relays. That is to the existing relay, how will we add the directional feature to protect the faults uh, to a particular direction only? So uh, let's see a figure first. We have three lines which represents three phases having separate CTs. These are the CTs. Now, let the phases be A, B and C. And we are going to analyze the fault at phase A. So let me change the position of this uh, A because, uh, okay, I'm, I'm doing this and I'm taking this is phase A, okay, phase A. So at present, I am assuming that the fault is at point P2. This is point P2. That is to the right side of the CT, to the right side of the CT, this CT, okay, right side of this CT. So the fault current is in this direction. For case one, I notate this fault current as IF1. Okay, IF1. Now, what about the phase difference between the voltage and IF1? Let this be bus 1, The let this be bus 2, be bus 2. Now, the fault current direction is given and this CT is connected to two coils two coils. The first coil corresponds to the directional relay and the second coil corresponds to the overcurrent relay and both these coils are in series. Okay, so this is the, this is how we are drawing the system. Now, we have two different inputs to the directional relay. First one is from the, okay, first one is from the secondary of the CT, which is this one. This is one input. Okay, now the second input is like this from the secondary of VT. Okay, secondary of VT. This is a VT. Okay, so the same line. The line voltage is, this is what is a line voltage. Okay, this is what is a line voltage. So this is the VT. So from the secondary of the CT, one of the inputs to the directional relay is given. From the secondary of the CT, another input is given. Okay, so now the directional relays are, in general, the directional relays are designed to operate for fault currents in only one direction. And suppose in this system, um, we want the relay to operate only for faults to the right side of the CT, which means in the first case, we are taking the fault at this point P2, right? In the second case, we are taking the fault at P1. Okay, let this be P1. Okay, and suppose we want only, we want the relay to only um, operate for faults to the right side of the CT. Now, let this be the voltage, voltage phaser. Then if the line is purely reactive, if the line is assumed to be purely reactive and if the resistance is neglected, then the fault current IF1 will be lagging the voltage by 90 degree. Now, what about this current, the direction of this current, if the fault is at point P1? which is to the left side of the CT, then this current reverses, right? This current will reverse like this. In this case, we have IF2, the second case fault current. In the second case, the fault current is IF2, which is to the left side of the CT and current leads the voltage by 90 degree, right? Now from this phasor diagram, we are going to define the trip regions and trip region and the block region of the directional relay. 
So as the line impedance is mostly reactive, a fault at P2 to the right of the CT will have a fault current IF1 from bus 1 to bus 2 that lags the bus voltage V by an angle of almost 90 degree. And this fault current is set to be, which is this one, okay, this fault current is set to be in the forward direction. On the other hand, if the fault is at P1, if the fault is at P1 to the left of the CT, we will have a fault current I, which is IF2 here, IF2, that leads V by almost 90 degree, almost 90 degree, okay. So this one. Now, this fault current is said to be in the reverse direction, this one. This fault current is said to be in the reverse direction. So for forward fault, fault current, we want the relay to act. For reverse fault current, we want the relay to block. That is how we are going to define the block region and trip region for the directional relay. Okay, now let's take like this. See, if the forward fault current is, uh, the, the ang angle of forward fault current is like this, then the reverse current will be like this, right? If the angle is like this, then the reverse current will be like this. So all possible for forward fault currents can be in this region, right? This region. So this region could be defined as the trip region, right? Trip region. So let me mark this. This is the trip region. Trip region. And the region not included here, that is the remaining part here, the remaining part. This is assumed as the, this is taken as, this is defined as the block region. Block region. Now, you can see here, when the current phaser is rotating like this, suddenly it enters the block region after this point, right? Or if it rotates like this, there is a drastic, I mean, uh, uh, shift occurring here and it directly enters to the block region. Instead, if we want a, a broader boundary uh, or, or a, a margin, we need a margin before we enter into the next region, then what can be done? So that is what is a practical definition of block region and trip region. So what I'm going to do is, instead of taking this voltage as V angle zero, this voltage is sent through a, um, uh, the, this voltage is given as input to a phase shifting element and this voltage I am taking as V angle phi one. So there is a, there is an angle here, which is phi one. Okay. So the whole trip region and the block region, this will be shifted. Basically the trip region will be shifting in the anti-clockwise direction by an angle phi one, which means the new V is this one, right? The new V is this one, which is V one angle phi one. And then this will be the, this will be the block region. And this will be the trip region, trip region. Okay, so this is how we define the block region and trip region. Now let's see the condition of, uh, condition for production of torque um, so that the relay circuit is active and it sends the trip signal to the circuit breaker. <laughs> 